my list of CS running. So I'll just tell you a bit about the history of this engine. I got this engine, a guy contacted me, he bought a property and he's uh, found this in the shed along with a VA which is the air cooled version of the compression start and he was going to take them to scrap but he just asked me if I wanted them and we can imagine what that answer was. So I got this engine and I bought it sight unseen so obviously a little bit nervous you know what what you're going to get but of course you know when you get it at a scrap price you can't complain obviously this this was seized the rack was seized in the fuel pump but that's just common with diesels that have been sitting around for a while um, but I, I pulled the fuel pump apart and that's in really really good condition so there's nothing wrong with that at all you can turn the engine over really really slowly and it will make the injector creak so the fuel pumps really good um, oil pumps pumping heaps all through the bearings I, I stripped all all the top half of the engine and redid that um, but the bottom half I just left I just washed it all out and cleaned it out of kerosene it's in the whole engine inside is in near brand new condition the exhaust port was completely blocked it was like the size of that bolt hole that house I don't know how it was running um, these two manifolds are missing. This one did have one that was all broken, but I'll, I'll get a couple of those there easy to get. Um, when the guy was loading it, because he, he dropped it off at my place, when he loaded it, he dropped it and broke this, bent that, bent a few things in there, but it was all easy to fix. That there, I just got a new uh, replacement, managed to track one down. Interestingly enough, the head must have been reconditioned at some stage because it's been painted and that was all light new but I thought that the bump clearance might have been out because the exhaust valve had left a ring just a little ring on the top of the piston and I thought oh the bump clearance must be wrong but I checked it and it was actually spot on so I'm not sure what was going on there the compression on it is really good it's still got the the marks in the cylinder from when they've honed it so I mean it's probably a chrome cylinder so they'll probably stay there a long time but the rings the rings are like brand new um, you can see like it will run with a compression valve halfway it's got that much compression um, but everything on the engine was really really good so I've washed the internal part out I've taken this cover off and washed all that I haven't cleaned the outside yet so I'll take that and get and give that a good wash I'm gonna leave it in original condition I'm not gonna paint it so I'll have to up the water tank these were all seized up so I've put new flanges on there the flanges the water jacket flanges on this they are actually the same size as the exhaust and air intake flanges on a VA engine because I was going to pinch the VA exhaust and airport manifolds to put on this engine but yeah they're, they're the same as the water jackets they're not this size here so I'll have to get a couple new ones of that one of the head studs, uh, one of the middle studs, was broken. It had, it was just completely snapped. So there were some odd things about this engine. So that one there, I replaced it. It was um, yeah, just snapped. So I put a new stud there. Had to get a new stud for the injector. So all in all, very happy with it couple of peculiar things the water jacket and inside the head I mean it was just full of scale which they normally are I know but I mean they were just like completely blocked exhaust port was completely blocked the air filter came with a broken air filter which had 1999 written on it so that was the last time that was replaced so I was running at least you know 20 years ago um, but the fuel filter I've got the fuel coming in here and it goes down around the outside of the filter, comes up the middle and out to the pump. The arrow there says it can come in there and in there and then out there. And they had the fuel coming in here. But what's interesting is when you actually take the filter apart, 
it just goes straight across and out there. So the fuel wasn't getting filtered at all. Fuel pump is in really good nick, but the injector nozzle was completely stuffed. It was just spraying straight. I tried cleaning it and everything. It made no difference whatsoever. I put a new one on there and it's spraying perfectly. But the fuel pump is in really good condition. I thought that would be a bit worn, but it's not. But the injector pressure setting was 500 pounds short of where it should have been. And these only run at like, oh, I think it's 1,800 pounds from memory. And it was, yeah, it was about 500 down. So unless they had adjusted the speed or something on it. This uh, fuel filter as well, that bolt in there on the water jacket flange had left a big dent in the old fuel filter. I've put a new one on there. And it's like they've just bolted it up and squashed it against there. Instead of just, I've just put a couple of washers in there and it's enough to keep it out. So there is some odd things about this engine, but it's in brilliant condition. It's all up and running now as it should be. So I've just got to make a, a water tank for it and, and, and some sort of frame to sit it on and put a fuel tank on it because it, it hasn't got one. And then yeah, that's um, done. It had a pulley on this side and it went right to the edge. So you couldn't get a crank handle on there. That's got that on it, which is wobbly. It's, the, the, the shaft is straight. This is not sitting on right. It's on backwards. So that should be on the other side. Um, so they had a flat belt pulley and a V belt pulley. Um, so I must have been starting on an inline type of system. I think possibly this could have been a Telstra backup engine so that it was running on a generator for backing up the power out in the country for when the power went down. Um, the phone lines, they run on, I think, 40 volts. So it might have just been running a 40 volt generator. But um, there's no Telstra markings on it at all. Um, if it was a Telstra engine, at least I know it would have been well looked after. But yeah, I just find it odd to have the flat belt pulley on there. The crank handle that came with it may not have been from this engine, but the pin was the wrong way around to crank it the wrong way, unless it was cranking the other side. So, oh yeah, just a few odd things, but I'm not complaining. I think I've got a really good engine here. And um, yeah, that's it running. So next, I've got this VA engine, which is the air-cooled version. So, I'll see what I can do with this one. It's, um, this was a Telstra engine because it's got the automatic decompression on it. So, it was run on, on the wires there. And some sort of runs the accelerator as well. The fuel pump. So, I'm not sure I have to get into that and look at it. And it's got the V belt cut into the flywheel. So, it'll be interesting to get this one going as well. See, it runs a little bit faster. I think that's. The CS is 650 RPM and this is 850 RPM. But that should be a good engine as well. That came together. But we don't know any of the history of it, we're only guessing. So yeah, that's my Lister CS engine running.